Welcome to a tutorial video in Twine 2.6. In this video, we're going to revisit the keys and doors example to solve some issues it introduced when we first created it, as well as expand using our knowledge of hooks and introduce some new macros and how to better improve the interaction design of the original story. Now, when we first saw keys and doors, it introduced the idea of creating the metaphor of key and door using the existing knowledge that we had at the time of passages, links, and working with the set and if macros. And just as a quick review, when we look at the set macro, this allows us to create a variable as well as set its value to something. Notice the English word to as part of that macro usage. And we saw when we use the if macro, we can create some type of comparison that is either true or false, and then act on some way. We also now know that the if macro is one of a number of different macros within Harlow that works with hooks. And we understand hooks to be single open and closed square brackets affecting some text or collection of macros enclosed within them. So we now have this additional knowledge and we can return to this example and better improve its interaction design. Now, I purposely use this term interaction design a couple of times now in this video because I want us to understand that there is a very large field called interaction design with many subfields and different approaches. You can also, if you prefer, think of this in terms of game design and a feedback loop. Feedback loop provides information and responses to a player, in particular in game design, as they interact with the system. Think about you moving across selections or choosing different things. If you don't use particular usages of powers in a game, you might not win against a boss battle in various other ways. And there are a numerous amount of examples we could talk about in game design. But we want to particularly think about interaction design and also kind of borrow the term of feedback loop as we reconsider this particular example. So in this example, there are in fact kind of three main issues with it. The first of which is the reader doesn't know what they're trying to do. So they are placed within a story and they have no knowledge of what is happening, how they might affect things, and generally this is just bad design. We just threw them into their front room and they didn't know what they were trying to do. They could access a side room or back room, but how do they know they're trying to get to the ending or not? And so this is bad design. Secondly, um, we need to particularly think about if we're giving them kind of exposition or some type of knowledge of what they're trying to do, we also need to accidentally don't do this again. So in the original example, if the reader revisits the front room, it would reset the key back to zero. Now this was actually part of the original sign so we could revisit it in this later video here. But in that original sign, if the reader accidentally went back to the front room and then tried to go to the back room after that, they would notice, hey, well, the key is accidentally being reset. And this was actually a factor of how that original sign used, because we didn't quite get to, the, get to the use of hooks. But now we've covered that, we can come back and kind of revise this. So the two issues laid out so far, right? That the reader doesn't know what's going on, and two, we can accidentally reset the value of key, which we want to prevent if we can. There's one more issue. The third is the reader doesn't know how to get out. Um, and that's kind of part of the first issue, but also an issue with the backdoor room passage in particular. They just know that suddenly they can get access to the ending, but they don't know what they did to gain access to it. And this is again, bad design. So as we're thinking about better interaction design, we can very generally put the kind of field of interaction design in kind of a single sentence, which is to say that Digital interactions in particular should seek to provide feedback or respond in some way to humans as they consider and enact possible goals. And this is, in game design terms, what we might think of as a feedback loop, right? We want to give players, particularly in games, feedback about what's going on, are they doing well or doing poorly, kind of help them towards possible goals. Interactive design, very similar idea, kind of establish goals and help them, kind of guide them towards what is possible using these interactions. So what that means for us as we kind of sit back and revise this is we going to need some changes to this original example, which is totally fine. Now that we know more, we can go back and improve what we already have. So let's start with giving the reader more knowledge of what's actually going on. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new passage. And I'll just kind of stick it over here and let's rename this introduction. The introduction is going to kind of establish what's going on. 
So what's going on is, well, what happens? Well, you have entered a house, find the key to the exit. And that, whoops, then what we want to do is we want to send them to the front room. So, okay, in the new revised story, the reader would start over here. So let's change start story here to the introduction. And we want to then send them to the front room and allow them to move around. Ah, but we've immediately run into that second issue I highlighted. We don't want to change the value of the variable front room if they accidentally come back. So let's fix that right now. Let's go ahead and cut this. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut on Windows, which is Control X. Um, if you are in Mac, it would be Command X. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it over here. In Windows, this is Control V. In Mac, it would be Command V. OK, so now we've kind of solved the first two major issues I highlighted. One. The reader knows what's going on. We've entered a house, we have to find a key. So we're establishing a possible goal. We are also establishing the value of a variable in the introduction, and then when the reader moves around possible spaces, they won't accidentally get rewritten. Notice the direction of this connection. It is moving from introduction to front room, but the reader can't move back from front room to introduction without also undoing within Harlow, which is okay, and we can allow that. So, okay, we can move from introduction to front room. Now we need to give the reader a little more control over what they're doing. Over inside room, we had this thing right here, which was okay at the time. We were changing the value of the variable. However, we want to give the reader some agency or some sense of control over what they're doing. We want to allow them to pick up the key or not. So, okay, let's revise this. So what we want is we want the reader to be able to pick up a key, which we know possibly we could use with a link macro, but we kind of run into an interesting problem in that if they pick up the key with the link macro and then they return back to this passage accidentally, the same issue we just ran into with the set macro, if they go from the back room back to the side room, they can pick up the key again, which is what we want to prevent. We don't want the same issue we just solved to reappear in a different case. So what does that mean? Well, we can always use mini macros in combinations with each other. So let's think through what happens. So what we want to do is say, okay, if the key is not one, which means I haven't picked it up yet, then show the link macro and allow the reader to pick up the key, which is to say change the value of its variable. Let's kind of put this in code so we can start to see what I'm talking about. So if key is not one, so this means, in a kind of programmatic sense, that the key has not been picked up yet. And then now let's attach this hook and say what happens in this hook. In this hook, this says, use the link macro, pick up key, close the macro, attach a new hook inside this existing hook. And in this case, set key to one. And let's just fix it. Okay, so what did I just do? I established something a little bit interesting. This would have said when we pick up the key, change the value of a variable key to one. Now it says that if it's not one, then we can pick up the key, which is going to change its value to one. In other words, when, we, when the reader visit this passage for the first time, they have the option of picking up the key or not. Until they pick up the key, this option remains available to them. Once they pick up the key, the value of the variable changes and they can't do it again, which is what we want. There's not infinite keys for them to pick up. They pick up one key. Once it's picked up, they can't do it again. So this solves, in another way, the problem we just ran into with a set macro in front room. We didn't want it rerunning. So in one case, we solved it by changing where we created the variable. We moved it from front room to introduction. In this case, we're solving it with an additional use of a macro, the if macro, creating the new comparison if key is not one, which means it hasn't been picked up yet, we can pick up the key. Okay, so let's solve the very last issue. The very last issue is within the back room, the ending just sort of appears to the reader and they don't really know what's going on. Now we've partially saw this by changing the introduction. What we now want to solve here is we want to say, okay, well, if the key is one, show the ending, we'll keep that, that works. 
But what happens if the key is not one? Oh, okay. So we might want to engage with a different macro here. Now, when we're engaging with the if macro, there is a companion macro to this available in, within Harlow, and it's called else. And I'll go ahead and write it and explain what I'm doing here. So this is else. So in English phrasing, the if macro establishes if this comparison is true, do this. The do this part is the hook attached to the macro. The else macro kind of expands that English phrasing. If this comparison is true, do this. Otherwise, do that. And to do that is the hook that's attached to the else macro. Now, in the revised code, if the comparison is true, we see one thing. If the comparison is false, we see a different thing. And this also helps with our interaction design because now we're giving feedback, thinking about if you prefer in game design terms a feedback system, we're giving feedback or feedback loop as part of the system. We're giving feedback to the player, if you prefer to think of that term, or a reader, if you think if you prefer to think in terms of a story. Something's going on, right? Hey, the door is locked the door is locked, I don't have the key yet. And then potentially go to the side room, pick up the key, come back to this room, get into the ending, and they can proceed. So, okay, let's now see all of this in action. So we're going to start with an introduction and I'm going to establish the value of the variable. We're going to move to the front room. We can move from the front room to the side room to the back room, but we can't move to the ending until we've picked up the key, which now we have control over as a reader. We can pick up the key or not. Once we've picked up the key and we've moved to the back room, then we have access to the ending and we can finally end the story. We've entered house, find the key to the exit, again, establishing possible goals for the reader, or if you prefer the player, if you like to think of it in game terms, move to the front room. Okay, we have access to the back room and the side room. Let's go to the back room first. The door is locked. Oh, okay, cool. So we know this is feedback. Again, this feedback loop, if you prefer to think of it in game design terms or in interactive design terms, think of it as providing information to potential reader. Let's move back to the front room. Can we move back to the back room? Yep, okay. Let's move over to the side room. Well, I could pick up the key, but let's say I don't want to do that yet. Let's explore the whole space. Side room, front room, side room back room. Okay, so I can't progress until I pick up the key, which we established in the introduction, but potentially a reader or player may not have been paying attention. Like, okay, I need to do something. Let's move over to the side room, pick up the key. Let's move over to the front room. Now let's go back to the side room and notice we can't pick up the key a second time. This is good. There's only one key and not infinite keys we could potentially pick up. Again, solving the same problem we saw with the set macro, solving it with the if macro in a different case. Let's move to the back room. Oh, now we can finally access the ending, and we have finally reached the end. So, reviewing what I've gone over in this video, we started with the original keys and doors example, which was fine based on the concepts we knew at the time. It used passages, it used links between those passages, and it used the sit and if macros. Totally fine at the time. Now, some additional knowledge of how hooks work we can kind of revisit this and go, oh, actually, I can improve this design. I can give better feedback, provide more information to the reader that helped them understand what they're doing. In doing that, with these additional concepts we've now learned, especially hooks within Harlow, we can improve our design and incorporate these advanced techniques to help a reader better understand not only what they're doing, but how they might possibly go about doing it, as well as give feedback, or if you prefer in game design terms, part of that feedback cycle to give them kind of information about what's going on and what they might need to do next. All incorporated as part of concepts we already knew within Harlow, the new concepts we now know within Harlow, and how we can incorporate them within interactive design as thinking about creating better design stories using the knowledge we know within Harlow, working within Dwayne 2.6. Thanks for watching.